On this day, 29th of December, 1170, Archbishop Thomas Becket was murdered in his cathedral. Very specific, time, place. And in fact, we know so much about Thomas Becket. And ever since his day, martyrs often being divisive in life and after death, theologians and lawyers and historians have argued about all those details of his life and what they meant. Such is the information we have that it's the stuff for films, Hollywood, plays, T.S. Eliot, and so on. He was at the point of fracture and collision of so many events and personalities. He saw the structures of the church from both sides, if you like. Lawyer, he rose to be the Lord Chancellor of England under the King Henry II, the highest lawyer in the land. Then he was made Archbishop of Canterbury, the highest prelate in the land. So the one who'd been Henry II's chief lawyer now became the Pope's chief archbishop in England. And so in his ministry, in his struggles, there was the King of England and the Pope in Rome, Alexander III. And Becket was between them between king and pope. As Archbishop of Canterbury, his life changed, not only because he was archbishop, but he in some ways became more ascetic, more aware of the demands of his ordination. And as the collisions grew, he went into exile for years. For something like six years, he was in different monasteries in France, whilst king and pope negotiated over him. But he came back briefly, and perhaps misunderstanding what the king wanted, four knights murdered Becket in his cathedral. He was canonized as a martyr within three years by Pope Alexander III. And Canterbury became a chief place of pilgrimage in the Middle Ages, till another Henry, Henry VIII, tried to destroy all memory of Becket. The throng of pilgrims was proof of the veneration for that martyr and his intercession for them. So there's endless material enough for films and poems and plays. But, of course, we here today honor him as martyr. And soon after his canonization, three years after his death, the king repented, did public penance at the place where his words triggered the murder of Becket. And the four knights who had killed him did public penance and were sent to the Holy Land as a punishment and reparation. There are many ways of remembering and venerating 
Thomas Beckett. I like to think of him as Chaucer describes him, of a beginning of a Canterbury Tales, as one more band of pilgrims set off for Canterbury. Chaucer thought of him as that holy and blissful martyr <laughs>